Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. Over there, we got Christopher James. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the show. Um, I'm going to reiterate what we said uh, before we get into all of our commercials and stuff yesterday. Uh, for anyone who subscribes and comments, I will be giving away a free Admiral's Bobblehead. No shipping, no nothing. That's all on us. Um, all we have to do, all you have to do is like us on Facebook, follow us on Facebook, give us a subscribe on YouTube, and comment that, and just say, all you have to do is say done, and you will enter the raffle, and I will. Oh, find what's the magic it. word? Done. Oh. Um, uh, also, um, going forward for us, uh, we would like to ask for prayers for the people of Japan. They got hit by a, a 7.0 magnitude earthquake. Um, yeah, uh, this morning. This morning, um, Chris is wearing a New Japan shirt. Um, as many of you know, we, we used to do a wrestling podcast. I'll tell you the story. Uh, this morning, I was watching a New Japan pro wrestling event live, and literally, they had a match in the ring happening, and they had to stop the entire match because of the building started shaking. First, the camera started shaking. Then I noticed the lights in the arena was shaking. Then suddenly the wrestlers were looking around and people in the crowd were looking around. They're like, oh, crap, earthquake. And then sure enough, the American commentators like, yeah, we're getting uh, postponed by earthquake. So, yeah, I hope uh, nothing bad happened to anybody in Japan. They also got hit with a tsunami warning. So, um, yeah, I'm representing the rainmaker, Kazushiko Okada, because he just so happened to be in the ring when the hurricane or the earthquake hit. Why do I keep saying hurricane instead of earthquake? You got the Carolina jerks on your mind. Shut up. But, yeah, uh, we uh, hope Japan's okay after that. Um, uh, I, I just wanted to reiterate, also, uh, we still wish our well wishes to the, K the family of the KHL player who passed away. Uh, from that, um, we also rest in peace. Uh, we also wish uh, Jared Tenardi a speedy recovery from his injury. Um, yeah, there's no word on what his injury actually is. He's not on the IR from any time I've seen. Um, he has not played either, so I guess it's an evaluation thing. I, yeah, but that happened a couple of days ago. You would think that they would have had some sort of evaluation on him. You would I mean, think, right? I mean, maybe second opinion, third opinion. Maybe he wants to play, and they're saying no. I mean, who knows? Yeah, but we would have heard something as often as you and me pay attention to the NHL news. We would have heard something. But um, another, uh, otherwise, welcome to our show. We are from Milwaukee to Nashville. For fans, by fans, brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, twenty oh two West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. You can also, while you're either calling them, well, you can call the Admirals for season tickets, half-season tickets, flex plans, 10-pack, 20-pack, you need, name it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you can, uh, they will, they will definitely take care of you, MilwaukeeAdmirals.com, or you can call them at 414-227-0550, or visit their website, MilwaukeeAdmirals.com. You can also get merch, like Chris has been pointing out for the last five minutes, at MilwaukeeAdmirals.com, click on the merch area, and you can get things like this. Yeah, I got one of those too. <laughs> um, and you can get, uh, a sign like that one right there. Like all the ones in the back. Except for this one right here. That one is a proud season ticket holder. Daniel's trying to phone home like E.T. But is that a reference people don't get no more? E.T. Hey. E. phone home? No? Am I showing my age? I don't know. People people forget that even Drew Barrymore was in that movie. Yeah, right? She was the little girl. Do people uh, even remember who she is anymore? I don't know. Um... Well, you're younger than me. Shouldn't you have your finger on the pulse? Nah. I, I have paying my it. finger on the remote control. Click <laughs> when I'm clicking through channels. Yeah. Like, uh, do people still do that or is it streaming now? Uh, yeah, they, they, they click remotes like this one. Yeah. Um, but uh, in other news, today the Nashville Predators took on the Florida Panthers for the second time in three days. Um, there's a lot of that going on tomorrow. They or right now they're probably hopping out, getting ready to hop on a plane to Dallas. Uh, uh -oh. They play tomorrow there at one o'clock. 
Ooh, they play Dallas. That's going to be a tough one because Dallas always plays uh, Nashville pretty intensely. Today was a pretty good game, though. Believe it or not, it was a pretty good game. Um, uh, before we get into this, I would just like to to tip my cap to some of the people out there who who really support us. Thank you so much. Thank you to our our sponsors. Thank, thank you, you to our Everblade fans too. You guys are awesome. Yeah, thank you to the Everblade organization as well. Um, we'll Predator fans, it. come on, man. We pump out content for you guys, too. Let's see some of that Nashville love. All righty. So, with that, stats. Oh, yeah, it's my cue. All right, shots on goal are 49-21 for the Panthers. Yeah, they, they were aggressive with taking shots. Uh, face-off percentage was uh, 52% for the Predators, 48 for the Panthers. Uh, both teams were 0 for on the power play. The Panthers 0 for 5, Predators 0 for 3. Penalty minutes 12 for the Preds, 8 for the Panthers. Uh, hits were 23 20 for the Panthers. Block shots 21 10 for the Predators, which is a good thing because uh, they don't block a lot of shots. And both teams had six giveaways. Uh, hold on. Don't steal my bit. I had ah computers giving me issues. Would you like me to go? No, uh, first period. Uh, Florida outshot Nashville twenty two seven, uh, and then second period Florida outshot Nashville twelve to six, and then Florida outshot Nashville fifteen eight to third. All right, Dan, go. All right. Uh, scoring in the first. No, I said. Scoring in the second, uh, Alexander Barkov with his 13th of the year with an assist from uh, Anthony Duclair and Weaker. Uh, Duclair's 11th, Weaker's 17th. This goal should not have happened. Uh, I will get into why when we're done, he is on my list. You guys know the list. Yeah, that same list COVID's on. Yes. Uh, then in the third period, at the 1945 mark, uh, Anthony Duclair scored his third of the year with an assist by Vern Hagen. Uh, he is 12th. Uh, Preds uh, held, their self, held their own against this team again. Yeah. All right. Uh, in net for the Predators was Yusuf Saros. He Yusuf only gave up a goal today, which was impressive. Uh, yes, he stopped 47 to 48 with the same percentage of 0.979. Since his return, he has a, a same percentage of 0.997. So, Saros getting hit in the head made him play better. Okay, maybe if we hit the rest of the team in the head, they'll play better. All righty. And that for uh, Florida it's supposed was, to be a joke, but apparently it ain't fun. Yeah, well, it all comes down to coaching style too. The yeah, can't, you can't make yeah can't make lemonades out of uh, limes. <laughs> Look at you! Can't all make right. chicken salad out of chicken. Well, you get where I'm going with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, Tom Chimelinski and Tim Peel were the referees. Uh, linesman was uh, Libor Suknek uh, and uh, James Tobias. Head coach for Nashville is John Hines. Head coach for Florida is Joel Quinville. Uh, scratches for Nashville, the, the lone scratch is Mark Borovesky. Scratch is for Florida are Vinny Hinnestroza, Marcus Nudevara, and Yuno Lamico. Is Borovesky even missed? Um, I don't know, but I do know he is hurt. Um, but no, do you think he's missing from the lineup? Do you think they really need him? That's what I'm getting at. I don't know. I, what do you I, mean I, you don't, don't know? know? You've been watching his team all year. Do you think they need him in the lineup? Over Benning, maybe, but that's probably about the only gap. Okay, well, there you go. You just answered my question. All right, three stars of the game, and all of these were worth it. Uh, third star of the game was Chris Drieger. He had a shot out. Uh, UC Saros, the second star. Congrats, Saros. You definitely earned that. Um, and Alexander Barkov with the goal. Now, crap list. That falls only on one person, and I'm sorry to do this. 
but Illy told, or not Illy told, but Yakov Trenin. Oh. Trenin, Trenin, you tripped Soros, therefore that's on you. You have to face him in the locker room after that. Yeah. After he worked his butt off. This was a really big defensive game, something we haven't seen much of from the Preds. And they did a lot of good work here. If we could build on this, there's still chance for momentum to be made. Yeah, we still have a lot of games left, so. Uh, I, uh, there's a lot of games left, but not a lot of time between now and the deadline. So we'll see what happens. But who knows what's, what could happen between now and the trade deadline. It, 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 there's a lot of what-ifs out there. There's a lot of speculation. Um. We're not going to get into any of that today. Um, we'll get we, into that within the next week or two. Yeah, we'll get back at it probably next weekend uh, as far as the trade stuff goes, unless something breaks, obviously. Yeah. But at the current moment, we just wanted to give you guys a thank you and a heads up of how everything's going. Anyway, uh, we will see you guys later. And Chris, you can magically appear here now. Peace.